Hey there gang, your Uke Sage here, also known as your Guitar Sage, and today we are going to learn how to decipher a chart. A chart is a uh, visual representation, if you will, of a song, different than sheet music, whereas sheet music specifically tells you the notes to play. Um, and tells you how to play them and that sort of thing. So typically sheet music is, is going to be for those that know how to read music and it's also for those, um, I don't want to say that are less creative, but it's for those that um, where the part is designated. So for instance, if you're in an orchestra, um, they're going to tell you exactly what you're to play on your sheet music, whereas a chart lets one be a little bit more creative. It gives you more of a structure, a basic structure of a tune and uh, from there you can um, kind of embellish on it. So uh, a lot of studio players will do this, especially um, Nashville players. Not as much LA and New York, although those guys are kind of catching on with this way of thinking. Um, and sometimes you do want to have a very specific part and that's where um, musical notation comes in handy but if you want a player to be able to kind of do their own thing that's what these charts are great for and they're great for learning tunes because it's you can do it fairly quickly so let's delve into this today we're going to be doing two charts um, and the first one is a a chart that I did in Word in the program Word you could do it in whatever text text edit or something like that um, but I try to do most of my charts in word and that sort of thing if it's a very simple song and there's not a lot of what we call pushes um, diamonds and that sort of thing we'll talk about that if you haven't already and you're just kind of viewing this without the ebook um, check out your uksage.com that's u k e sage.com um, or check out yourguitarsage.com and both there's ebooks there for each appropriate instrument um, and it has everything also that you would need in order to read these charts so this video is a supplement to that ebook um, but stick around because you'll learn some stuff even if you don't have the ebook okay so um, Specifically, we're going to be looking at two tunes today. One of them, like I say, I did here in Word, and I prefer to do this in Word, but if it's something that has more detail, then I will do a handwritten chart, and the second chart we're going to look at is a handwritten chart. Okay, so let's look at the first thing here. Um, when, you're, when you're looking at a tune like this, usually these are on one page, um, so that you can just be sitting there and playing and you don't have to flip any pages or anything like that when you're in the studio and or playing on stage or something like that. So typically it's all on one page. Um, specifically here I want to kind of have you look at this from a general view first and then we'll kind of drill down and get closer. If you notice on the side here we have things like intro, verse, chorus, you know, chorus four, that sort of thing. Um, this is to tell you the basic part of the song and of course everything that follows the heading is you know this is the intro and everything here is what is involved in the intro um, so that's kind of the, the basic song from here down okay these things at the top here um, tell you other things the songs in six so that means six eight like one two three four five six one two three four five six as a, as opposed to a song that's in four like one two three four one two three four which is the majority of most tunes so this tells you kind of the feel of the song it also means that each measure would get six beats so this would be one two three four five six 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 Okay, so it doesn't tell you the strumming method. There's a lot of other details that it doesn't tell you because, again, we're trying to get the skeleton of the song. Some people will interpret the song completely differently. Uh, maybe someone would finger pick it. Maybe they finger pick one, two, three, four, five, six. Somebody else may strum it. Somebody may just hold the chord out for six beats. So it specifically is not going to show you the strumming. Sometimes I will put the strumming on a chart, but most of the time I won't because it's left to interpretation okay so 
Um, okay, so let's go back to the top here. So this tells you the timing that the song is in. This here tells you where to put your capo on your instrument, whether that's the ukulele or the guitar. I'm going to put it up here at the top to put your capo at whatever specific fret. Okay. Um, and sometimes I'll have the title here and the, and the um, the artist and that sort of thing as well. Okay, so so we mentioned these are the different parts. Um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, da 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 da. This right here represents anything that's in those brackets. There we are we are to repeat. So, and if it doesn't say how many times to repeat, like if I wanted you to repeat it three times, I would put three x right there. That would mean repeat that entire section or actually do that entire section three times not play it once and repeat it three times play it three times only Okay. now if I don't have that there then you just have that with the brackets and you just play C A minor C A minor and then repeat it after the second time that you repeat it you come down to the verse Okay. Um, this right here I'm going to take that out because um, that's kind of my own little uh, bit there that I don't usually put in charts. But um, okay, so let's look at this right here. You'll notice this is a little bit different. You see two chords in the place of one measure. So of course that means this is still six beats, but these two chords would share that six beats. So this would take three beats, and this would take three beats. So it'd be one two three four five six 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 get it okay split measure the chords need to be played two chords need to be played during that time okay um, specifically here you see this EF again that was me doing uh, another note regarding some bass notes so ignore that for right now uh, we'll get more into that as we get into the handwritten chart. Okay, that's the bulk of this chart here. Um, we're going to move on to the next one. This chorus four, basically, this the way this song goes is it's intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, just keeps going for the first three verses, uh, or first three up to the first three choruses, and there's a fourth chorus. Okay, moving along, let's get to this other chart here. Okay, now this is a handwritten chart. Like I say, handwritten charts, I like them better because there's more detail in them. Some people don't like them because they say they're messy. Doesn't matter, right? We're trying to play music here. Play it unmessy, okay? It's just music. It's just a piece of, it's a sheet. So um, it doesn't play itself. You have to play it. So give it life, all right? So here we go. This specifically, um, I wrote, it's the guitar feel of C. That means you would be using... Uh, chords like C, A minor, G, D, that sort of thing, or D minor. Um, but sometimes you won't see that written either. So, but specifically here, I did put capo five. Okay, so you can see that there, and uh, that means put your capo on the fifth fret. And you see a bunch of numbers here. Now these numbers will look very um, foreign to you if you haven't checked out the ebook. It's another way of looking at chords. It's also called the National Number System. If you don't know it, it's a great thing to learn and I do teach it in the ebook. So check it check it out at both those websites. Okay, so let's ignore the uh, numbers here and just act like these are regular chords, C, G, and all that stuff. You have your repeat symbols again, right here and right here. Uh, you can see that in this case here I just put V, C, V, C, like first chorus, first chorus, fade, meaning a fade out, and there are your repeat symbols again. Okay, you see some other things here, like for instance our um, underline, which means that it's a split measure, so two beats and two beats, right? Um, what else about this one? Okay, so we said that this song's in in the key of four four, or sometimes what we call four. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, that sort of thing. Um, so that means that this is a measure of four. And this would get two beats, and this would get two beats. Okay. Um, what else? Here, the time changes to two four, or what we call two, and that would mean that everything here is in four, except for this section right here that gets two beats. Then it goes back to the four four time signature again, or what we call four, and each one of these would get four beats four beats. Okay. Beatles did that a lot. Some other bands that do that kind of thing as well. You see that again down here. Okay. 
um, the little number that you see right here that makes this chord a seventh chord. So if, for instance, if this were a C chord, it would be a C7 chord. Um, okay, what else? This is a flat 7 chord. So if this were, a, uh, if this were say, a, uh, an F or, yeah, so if this were an F chord, then this flat would make it uh, an E. Or if it were a B chord, then it would make it a B flat. Okay, there you go. Um, that's the kind of the quick of, a ch of, of how to read charts here. If you need more help, check out your ukesage.com. Get the ebook there. Also, check out your guitarsage.com if you're a guitar player. And um, the diagrams and the descriptions that I have in there will help you a ton on deciphering these charts. All right, thanks for stopping in. Go practice your Uke Sage, your Guitar Sage, out.